Shalom. First and foremost, I want to begin this lesson by giving all praises, honor, and glory to my power, Yahweh, Bahashom, Yahweh Shai, Bahashom, Rakak, Kodash. Yahweh is the true holy name of the Heavenly Father, who this world ignorantly calls God, and Bahashom is in the name, and Yahweh Shai, that is the true name of our Lord and Savior, who this world ignorantly calls Jesus. And the Rakak Wadash is the Holy Spirit in the ancient Hebrew tongue. And also, I want to give double honors unto my apostles and elders of Great Millstone, which are the true leaders of the nation of Israel that the Lord has set forth on his earth to lead and to guide and to be great examples for the nation of Israel. And also, I want to say Shalom to the 144,000 men that are laboring in his work and all truth and in sincerity, I want to say Shalom to you brothers. And also, I want to say Shalom to the rest of the elect, which consists of the men, women, and children that are believing and that serving the Lord to the best of their ability. I want to say Shalom. And I'm the brother Gabar from the GMS Salt, GMS West Palm Camp. And I'm coming back with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and Lord willing the elect of the nation of Israel is edified. In this lesson, I'm gonna be going in on how Juneteenth is wicked. It's not of the Bible. Nowhere in the Bible does the Lord commands us to celebrate Juneteenth. And before I be begin with the precepts, I wanna get a little history on the, on the uh, history of Juneteenth, okay, real quick. And it's from the uh, dictionary, okay, on Google. It says Juneteenth, a holiday celebrated on the 19th of June to commemorate the emancipation of enslaved people in the United States. The holiday was first celebrated in Texas, where on the date in 1865, in the aftermath of the Civil War, slaves were declared free under the terms of the 1862 emancipation Pro proclamation okay so basically this holiday okay uh jake celebrates this holiday okay um under the impression under the delusion that they're free that they're no longer slaves, okay? But the Bible clearly states that we're still slaves, okay? And I wanna first open up with the book of Baruch, chapter three and verse eight. And it reads, behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. So still unto this day, we're in our captivity, okay? And as of today, today is June 20th, 2022 we're still slaves okay we might not be under hardcore slavery like it was in the 16 17 1800s early 1900s but we still slaves you still gotta you still gotta uh pay your taxes okay you got a social security card you have a driver's license and when you um, have these Federal Reserve notes, who's on the face of the money? That tells a lot. The so-called white man. That's another indicator that, 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 that we're still slaves. All right. Let's continue on. It says, where thou hast, hast scattered us. Okay. Because according to the curses in Deuteronomy, which I'm gonna pull out um, here in a, in a few. One of the of the many curses that the Lord has put on us, the Lord says that we'll be scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. So we have Israelites scattered literally in, in every part of the world, in Russia, in China, in, uh, in Iraq, okay? Any place that you can think about, the Israelites is, is there. 
And that's another indicator. It says for a reproach and a curse. Okay, and, and we're a curse. We're a cursed people. Okay, we're in the hoods. We're in the ghettos. We're still under these curses. And I'm gonna get a few curses in the Deuteronomy. And it says, and to be subject to payments. Right, we're subject unto payments. Okay. Then the Lord says, he, he, um, uh, is Israel a home board slave? Okay. So we subject unto payments. Okay. We, we, we got to pay car, car payments. We got to pay for lights. We got to, we got to pay for water. We got to pay for food. You, you, you got, you got to pay rent. You got to pay a mortgage. You got to pay car insurance. And that's another sign that we're, we're, we're a slave because in the kingdom of heaven, we're not going to be paying payments. Okay. We're not going to have to set an alarm clock and be somewhere at seven o'clock in the morning. You have to be here. Okay. It says, according to all the iniquities of our father, which departed from the Lord, our power. And that's why we went into slavery for our, for our iniquity. Okay. Which is sin. Okay. And that's why, that's why we enslave. That's why, that's why we got to um, go to our enemies for the one of all things. For our disobedience towards the Lord. And uh, another precept, this is Baruch 4 and 1. This is the book of the commandments of Yahweh and the law that endureth forever. And who was the law given to? According to Psalms, the 149 and verse 19 and 20, the Lord says the laws was given unto the Israelites. And it reads, all they that keep it shall come to life but such as leave it shall die. And that's why our people are continuing to die from high cholesterol, diabetes. Okay. We getting gunned down in the streets. Romans 6 and 23 says, for the wages of sin is death. So this is why our people are dying at a, at an outstanding rate. Okay. I'm going to go to verse, uh, jump to verse six. Baruch 4 and 6, you were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because you moved the most high to wrath, you were delivered unto your enemies. For ye provoked him that made you by sacrifice unto devils, and not unto Yahweh by Shemal Shai. And that's why we got put into slavery. Okay? Because we are the most high's chosen people. And what be, and with being the most high chosen people comes responsibility. It comes a certain way that you got to carry yourself. Okay. We, we, we can't eat. Um, we can't eat whatever we want. We have a dietary law. Okay. We have certain customs. Okay. We can't be celebrating these holidays of the world such as Juneteenth, okay, July 4th, which is um, coming up, which most of our people are going to be celebrating. All right. So, lo so let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. And I'm just going to hit a couple of precepts from this book of Deuteronomy, okay, proving that we're still enslaved. We're not free. Okay. And that's the illusion that Esau Edom, you know, um, told you. All right. That's the illusion that he gave you. Okay. You, you get to work. All right. You get to stack up money. You have certain privileges. Okay. And it's like the brother that um, stopped by our camp yesterday. He was locked up in prison for a few years and he made a good point. A trustee, you know, trustees get certain privileges but the trustee that the, they're they're still um in prison all right and that's just like us okay w w you you might have certain uh privileges here okay you might get to 
work and, uh, and then on the weekend you get to club and go out and party and drink okay you might be riding in a in a brand new mercedes benz okay you might have a nice house you know you might have some children but guess what we we, we still slaves okay so let's go to the book of deuteronomy uh, matter of fact before i get before i get deuteronomy I want to hit this uh, real quick. This is Haggai. All right, this is Haggai chapter one and verse six. This is another uh, precept proving that we still slaves. All right, Haggai one and six. You have so much and bring in little ye eat but ye have not enough ye drink but ye are not filled with drink ye clothe you but there is none warm and he that earneth wages to put it into a bag slock and he that earneth wages earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes okay and why is our bag filled with holes going back to Baruch 3 and 8 because we subject unto payments alright so you might get paid every Friday but every Friday you know you have a bill that, 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 that you gotta pay okay whether it's your rent whether you have a mortgage whether you have a car payment car insurance whether you're on child support whether you got to pay your lights or, or your water bill, you know? So after we uh, work all these hours and we get paid, you know, we have just enough, you know, to keep our head just above water. Okay. And when your head is just above water, that's not a comfortable feeling. That's an uncomfortable feeling, you know? So, you know, just say you get paid $600 a, a week. You know, after you pay your bills and you buy some food, you know, you might be left with, you know, $100, maybe $64 or something like that. And that's just enough for you to get to and fro back to work with gas. And that's how we are. Okay. And, you know, the brothers brought out an article, you know, a week or two back where the um, your average American doesn't have more than a thousand dollars in their in their savings account you know so let's go to the book of deuteronomy chapter 28 starting at verse 15 and it reads but it shall come to pass if thou would not hearken unto the voice of the lord thy power to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which i command thee this day so still unto this day, June 20th, 2022, we still supposed to be keeping the law, statute, and commandments. Okay, can we keep the commandments um, all the way 100%? No, but we supposed to be keeping the laws until the best of our ability. Okay, there's some laws that you can keep, such as not eating pork, crab, shrimp, lobster, not celebrating these holidays of the world, which is really hell days, okay, such as Christmas. Christmas is against the Bible. And you can read uh, Jeremiah, the 10th chapter, starting at one to about verse four or five. That describes Christmas is in the Bible. Okay, another thing is your birthday. Nowhere in the Bible did the Messiah celebrate the birth uh um his birthday or any of our forefathers such as abraham isaac and jacob all right moses job all right i believe that was Job. we said curse the day that i was born so none of our forefathers all right celebrated these these holidays man okay and let's get a a preset real quick Let's go to the book of uh, 
Romans. All right. All right, this is Romans chapter 15 and verse four. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. So these, this Bible, the Holy Bible, the King James 1611 Bible, these things that's written in this scripture was here so we can learn. All right. And I want to look up this word learn real quick so give me a minute all right this is learn from the dictionary.com learn and it says gain or acquire knowledge or skill in it says gain gain an understanding of okay to take in to grasp all right, apply oneself to. So these th th these scriptures was here so we can apply them. Okay? And if finish off, it says that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And this is where our hope lies in. Okay, not in Juneteenth. Okay, not in the so-called white man. Not in America. Okay, because... America, as we know, is, is, is gone. Okay, America is circling the drain. Okay, get, your gas price is not going to go back to a dollar or two dollars anymore. Those days is long gone. Okay? America is on its way out. The Lord is about to plague this, this place. And that's why you got to depart. Okay, as it says in Micah. Okay, come up out of the ways of, of this place. Okay. Your enemy has told you that you're free. But the best slave is the slave that thinks that he's not a slave. All right, and like it says in Ecclesiastes, surely oppression maketh the wise man mad. Okay, and we mad in righteousness. Okay, we're not taking vengeance into our own hands. No, vengeance is of is of the Lord. So we're waiting upon Yahweh Bashim Al Shai to come back in and redeem us. But let's go to Micah real quick, then I'm gonna go back to Deuteronomy. This is Micah chapter 2 and 10. Arise ye and depart. Depart spiritually. Come up out of this place. All right, because what, what, what did uh, Hosea say? All right, the book of Hosea, man. Hosea chapter 4 and 1. Hear ye the word of Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai, ye children of Israel. So we're supposed to hear this word. Not only hear, but we're supposed to apply this word. It says, for the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. So the Lord has, has a problem with America. The Lord has beef. Okay, and anybody that's um, joint with this world, you're going to be destroyed. As it says in Proverbs 11 to 21, though hands join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. So if you're joined with this place spiritually, okay, you in, you, you in the spirit of America, okay, celebrating Juneteenth, celebrating July 4th, guess what? You're, 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 um, you're spiritually uh, 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 taking on. You're spiritually an Edomite. Okay, John eight and forty four says, "Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust thereof ye shall do." So we supposed to come up out of this place spiritually. Okay, come back into your heritage. All right, like it says in Jeremiah six and sixteen. All right, and I'm gonna get that, Lord willing. And it says, um, "Because there is no truth, right? There is no truth." Okay, our people still calling themselves black. Ain't nobody on the face of the earth black. Right? We are different shades of brown. All right, the blacks, Hispanic, and Native Americans, we, 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 
we, we the same people. All right, we might be different shades of brown. One might be a little lighter, one might be darker, but but we the same people. It says there's no truth, no mercy, nor knowledge of Yahweh Bashem Yahushua in the land. And who's who? Who the only people in the land that that has the knowledge? Is the men that Yahweh Bashem Yahushua set forth? All right, Amos three and three and uh, seven. The Lord will reveal His secrets unto His servants, the prophets. So the prophets are got the got the truth, and they and they um uh going out to the highways and byways, and they spreading this truth. Okay, and then then you have the innumerable multitude. What's going to believe? All right, let's finish off of Micah two and ten. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. All right, and this is not our place of comfort. All right, this is this is the so-called white man's kingdom. All right, this is his heaven. You know? And it says, because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, even with a sore destruction. Okay, and how is this place polluted? By the philosophies. All right? The 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 wine. Esau Edom, he's spreading that madness. Okay? Plantation Christianity, how people believe that the Lord name is Jesus, they believe that He's a so-called white man. All right, how people believe that the skin color don't even matter, even though it's recorded in the scriptures. How people believe that the white man can be saved. So this this place is is is, is destined for for destruction. All right. And anybody that's with this place spiritually, okay, you want to stay in America, guess what? The Lord going to leave you here and he going to melt you, <laughs> you know? Uh, let me get that precept. All right, this is Zechariah chapter, uh, chapter 14 and verse 12. And it reads, and this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Shai will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. And this is speaking about the destruction of America when the Lord, all right, shoots those missiles here in America, man. All right, this place is going to be a lake of fire. Okay, as it says in, in the book of Revelation, all right, chapter 14 and verse 10. You're going to be destroyed in the presence of the holy angels, in the presence of Yahweh Shai, and in the presence of the hopeful elect. It says, read that again. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. And a good example of this was in Terminator. All right. When Sarah O'Connor had that vision. So people are going to be stand. The people going to be melted it says uh and their eyes shall consume away in their holes and their tongues shall consume away in their mouth you know and this is what you don't want to be a part of you don't want to take place in, in the destruction all right when this place is being destroyed with with thermonuclear missile all right fire but anybody who's um joint with this place you're going to be destroyed right along with this place. Okay, so let me go back to the book of Deuteronomy 28 and 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy power, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statute, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So I'm going to get a few of these curses. Okay, then I'm going to wrap it up. So let's go to, uh, let's jump to Deuteronomy 28 and 48. And it reads, Therefore shall thou serve thy enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, and in thirst, and in nakedness, and in the want of all things. Okay? So, we got to go to our enemies for the want of all things. When we hungry, we got to go to Walmart. You got to go to Kroger's or the Whole Foods. 
or either farmer's market and thirst. Okay, we don't own Zephyr Hills. We don't own Fiji. We don't we don't own Aquafina. All right, we don't own any of these uh, uh, water companies. Who own these places? The so-called white man, okay? Even when you gotta get juice, all right, we don't own Welsh juice, all right? We don't own Mott's. We don't own anything. And it says in nakedness, all right? So we don't own any of these clothing companies either. Tommy Hill figure, all right? Puma, Champion, Polo, all right? Balenciaga, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Nike, Adidas. We don't own any of these places, all right? And it says, he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Okay, so that yoke of iron is not upon our neck right now. And that, that means that we've been destroyed as a people. So now, the Esau, he don't have to keep a yoke of iron upon our neck. All right, that's because our people are destroyed. Okay, they out celebrating Juneteenth, believing that they free. So Esau, Edom, he don't have to put a yoke of iron upon our neck. Okay, and it's just like a dog. Okay, when you have a dog, you have to break that dog in. Okay, when it's a puppy, you want to take him for a walk. What that puppy doing? Be trying to fight you. Be trying to bite on the leash. Okay, but after a while, that puppy gets used to that leash. Okay? And then eventually, you can walk a dog and you don't need a, a, a leash upon its neck. Why? Because it's been broken in. It's been trained. Okay? And that's how our people are. All right? So let's go to Deuteronomy 28 and 54. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother and towards the wife of his bosom and towards the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. Okay, and yesterday during the Juneteenth shooting, I mean Juneteenth uh, celebration, there was a shooting that took place in D.C. Okay, a 15 year old boy, he, um, he got killed. A couple people got injured. So, hey, we still under the curses. Because our people, they got an evil eye towards one another. Okay? It's always so-called black-on-black crime. Okay? You got these different gangs fighting against each other. All right? Vice Lords versus GDs. All right? BDs versus GDs. All right? Latin Kings. You know? Versus Vice Lords. So on and so forth. We keep going... Blood versus Crips. All right. So our people, they have an evil eye towards one another. You don't see no other nation, all right, killing each other at the rate that, that uh, our people do. The so-called Blacks, Hispanic, and Native Americans, man. Okay, they got a thing in in uh, music called dr drill music. And what is that aimed towards? Killing our people. You know, I'm going to go ride on this nigga. You know? But you don't never see our people, you know, coming in that same energy and that same spirit towards Esau Edom. All right. And uh, close out with this. This is Deuteronomy 28 and verse 68. And it reads, bear with me one second. All right. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. And the Lord Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. And what does Egypt mean? Okay, the book of Exodus tells you that Egypt is synonymous for the house of bondage. And this is modern day Egypt. It tells you that in the book of Revelation. All right, let me get that real quick. This is Revelation 11 and 8. And the dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. And those dead bodies is talking about spiritually. Okay, because the book of John, chapter 6. Let me get this preset real quick. All right, just John, chapter 6, and verse 63. And it reads, it is the spirit that quickeneth. 
And that word quickeneth goes back unto being made alive. So it's the Holy Spirit that makes us alive. All right. And two thirds of our people, they have they don't have the Holy Spirit. All these people that's out here celebrating Juneteenth. OK, they don't have the Holy Spirit. So spiritually, they're dead. All right. It says the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And that's why our people are dead, because why? They're rejecting um, the words of life. OK, they they love death. All right, the scripture says in the book of Proverbs, I believe, all right, all they that hate me love death. All right, let's go back to the book of Revelation 11 and 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in, of, shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. All right, and this place is spiritually Sodom. And we already see how this place is spiritually Sodom. Okay. Damn fucking transgenders everywhere, man. Okay. You got fucking dudes, brolic ass dudes, six three, six two, six five, wearing dresses, wearing skirts. So you see how this place is spiritually Sodom and it's spiritually Egypt. Okay? Look at the back of the dollar bill. Alright, you got the Egyptian pyramids. All right. And also you got our people calling themselves Africans. All into Egyptology. So let's go back to Deuteronomy 28 and 68. And the Lord, Yahweh, shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. All right. How do we get to America? By way of ships. It says, by the way whereof I speak unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. All right. Have we seen um, our homeland, Jerusalem? As a nation? No. All right, and it says, Thou shalt see it no more again, and there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. All right, so nobody ain't gonna be able to uh, free us. All right, not Esau Edom, not Joe Biden, not Donald Trump, not Tupac. Not uh, Barack Obama, not Martin Luther King. None of these guys can redeem us. Only man who can redeem us is is Yahweh Shai. And that's what that's who we waited for. All right, we waiting on Yahweh Shai to come back. Okay, and Yahweh Shai hasn't came back, man. Okay, Yahweh Shai is waiting to come back, man. All right, and I'm gonna close out with this. In the book of Matthew, chapter 1, and verse 21, and it reads, And she shall bring forth a son. Okay? And that's speaking about uh, Mary. All right? Um, Yehoshua's um, mother. It says, And thou shalt call his name Yehoshua, for he shall save his people from their sins. So Yehoshua, he's going to save us. Okay, not, not nobody else. And we haven't been saved. All right, we are not free. Okay, but one way you can be free is spiritually. All right, and I'm going to close out with this. This is John chapter 8 and verse 32. And ye shall know the truth. What truth? The truth of the Holy Bible. All right. The doctrine of Yahweh Shai, man. Okay. And who, who has the 100% the truth? Our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. That's, that's where the truth is from. And there's only one truth. All right. There's, it didn't say truth with, with the S, plural. There's one truth. Okay. And it begins with coming back into your heritage. All right. Identifying yourself as a Hebrew Israelite and not black, not Hispanic, not Native American. Those are bywords and proverbs that's been put upon us by our enemies. And it says, and it was like, yeah, it says, John 8 and 32, again from the top, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Call all y'all by Shmau Shai. All right, this is, we, we free through this truth. All right? Spiritually, 
we 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 we're free. All right, we free from those uh, uh, spiritual yokes that 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 was upon us. All right, now we have the hundred percent truth. All right, we have access unto the heavenly Father and His Son. All right, through His through His true and proper name. Okay, we no longer believe in and trusting in Esau Edom and his ways and his philosophies. All right. You know, so I just want to bring this lesson out through the spirit. All right. Because Juneteenth is not of the Lord. Nowhere in the Bible does the Lord commands us to celebrate Juneteenth. And we're not free. All right. But we are free spiritually. All right. And I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashom, Yahweh Shai, Bahashom, Rechak, Budash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone and peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, the 144,000 men that are laboring in his work in all truth and in sincerity. I want to say Shalom to you brothers. And also I want to say Shalom to the rest of the elect, which consists of the men, women, and children that I believe in and that serving the Lord to the best of their ability. I want to say Shalom and the water, Yahweh Bashim Shai for giving me the Holy Spirit and make this lesson, Lord willing, until the next lesson, I'm going to say Shalom in a Baba Ball. DTA, Kwam Yashalom.